In this video, we are going to finish the rest of the Horde setup by connecting Horde agents on separate EC2 instances to the Horde server before initiating the build on our host machine, which will reach out to the Horde server for help by distributing that build to connected agent machines. If you plan on using local machines instead of AWS EC2 instances for the worker machines, then skip to the part of the video where we RDP into our Windows EC2 instance. To do that, let's spin up a couple of new EC2 instances to run the Horrid Agent software. Once again, I'm going to launch an instance very similarly to how we did it for the instance running the Horrid server, except this time I'm going to select a Windows AMI because any Linux AMI will require additional setup steps. If you want a tutorial on how to set up Linux worker machines, which are cheaper and faster as Horde agents, comment down below and support the channel by becoming a member on YouTube or Patreon. Links to both are in the description below. The other exception is that for the instance type, I highly suggest picking an instance type that has a lot of bandwidth, at least 32 gigabytes of memory, and a RAM to CPU core ratio of 4 to 1 because a lower ratio or less memory may lead to out of memory issues or other build errors on those worker machines during the Unreal Engine build. So most of the M instances will fit this criteria. For example, I'm choosing the M8i.2x large instance, but the stronger the instance type you choose, the faster the compilation speed will be. Use the same login key as before, for the network settings, create a new security group, make sure that the port for RDPing is open, and lastly, make the volume storage a bit larger, around 50 gigabytes. You can play around with this depending on how big or small your Unreal C++ project is. And then let's edit the security group attached to the instance like we did with the Horde server instance, but this time let's allow for inbound traffic to port 7000 through 7010 since the horde agent could use any port in this range after that let's create another elastic ip address like before and assign it to the newly created instance once the instance is running let's try to remote connect to it go to rdp client and click get password upload that pem file from earlier and save this password after decrypting it in a secure location because we will be using that to remote connect to all of our worker machines. To do that, let's open up Remote Desktop Connection, click Show Options, and for the computer, copy and paste the elastic IP address or the public DNS of the instance. And for the username, it's usually Administrator with a capital A. Click Connect and paste that password from before. In the Windows instance, open up any web browser and enter the URL for the Horde server from before. From here, go to Tools, Downloads, and download the Windows installer for the Horde agent. Once that's downloaded, run the installer. Just click Next until you see this prompt asking for the Horde server URL and replace where it says localhost with the IP address or public DNS of the machine that is running the Horde server and click next and before finishing the agent installation uncheck this enroll agent with horde server box because we still have to make some minor changes to the configuration for the agent which is located in the program data epic horde agent directory in a file called agent.json go to the link in the description and copy and paste this gist into the agent.json file replace the url in the server profile with either the ip address or the public dns of the machine running the horde server and then for the compute ip replace the value with the public ip address not the public dns of this machine that we are remote connected into right now. If you are not using AWS, you can remove the ephemeral and enable AWS EC2 support lines. And if your host machine, Horde server machine, and this Horde agent machine are all in the same private network, then you can remove the compute IP line from this file as well. If you want to know more about the specific configurations, then check out the official documentation on this. Going back, don't forget to save the file. Now let's restart the Horde agent by running this PowerShell command from the description so that the new settings are applied. And if we go back to the Horde server page, specifically server agent enrollment, you'll see the option to register the newly set up agent. 
Don't do it just yet unless you're using local on-prem hardware instead of AWS because the name of the agent by default is set to the name of the machine. This could cause problems later on if you're making multiple EC2 instances with custom templates or custom made AMIs because Horde agent names need to be unique per agent IP. So again, only if you're using AWS, not your own machine. Let's rename this machine and restart the computer after applying these changes. After a few minutes, if we go to the Horde server agent enrollment page on our host machine, you should now see a new enrollment request with the new machine name. Go ahead and register that agent with the server. Let's double check that our agent configuration got picked up by making sure that the compute IP value matches what we set it to earlier. And that is all for setting up the Horde agent. The next steps are optional, but I want to set up a couple of more Windows EC2 instances with Horde agents running on them. So I'm going to create a AMI from this last instance we just made to avoid having to repeat a lot of those previous steps we just did. Note that the creation of this AMI could take a while since we can't make any new instances with this image until the status of this AMI is available. So feel free to pause the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and come back when the status changes. Once the image is available, let's make some new instances. It's almost the exact same process as the last Windows instance we just made, except I'm going to use a new name, the new AMI that we just made, and for the network settings, choose the security group we made for the last instance. You can always check the rules of the group to make sure that it was the one for the Horde agent instances. And once that's been created and launched, let's allocate another Elastic IP address with that new instance. Once the new instance is running, RDP into that instance should be the same username as before administrator with a capital A and it should be the same password that we used for RDPing into the last instance. Edit the agent.json file, replace the compute IP with the elastic IP address, not the public DNS of the new instance that we are connected to, and save the file. If you're not changing the machine name like how I'm about to, then you'll have to restart the Horde agent manually with that same PowerShell command from before. But if you did change the machine name, then that requires a restart of the machine, which will consequentially restart the Horde agent with the new agent.json settings. I did this exact same set of steps just now for a third Windows EC2 instance. Don't forget to register all the Horde agents you set up to the Horde server. Since the first EC2 Horde agent machine was restarted, let's delete this agent so we can re-enroll it as well. Now let's go to agent enrollment. If you don't see all the machines where you set up the Horde agent, then wait a bit longer, refresh the page. If a long time has passed and you still don't see enrollment requests for all the machines, then either check your server logs, which are located where you ran sudo docker compose up, specifically in the data slash logs folder in these txt files. You can use the less command to view them or check your agent logs, which are located in the same folder as the agent.json file, also in txt files. Going back to the agent enrollment page, go ahead and register these new Horde agents and verify that they all have unique names and unique compute IP addresses. And now all that's left is setting up our Unreal Engine C++ project to connect to this Horde server during a build. To do that, open the build configuration.xml file for either your project or the engine. I'm going to modify my engine's configuration since I'm building Unreal from source. All the possible locations for this file are located in the official documentation for the build configuration. Copy and paste this GIS into your build configuration file and replace this server hostname parameter with either the IP address or the public DNS of the machine running the Horde server. Note that if you plan on using Linux worker machines instead of Windows at some point, then this Windows pool parameter will instead be Linux pool. 
Lastly, if you don't want to do any work or the least possible amount of work on your host machine to build Unreal C++ code, then uncomment these last two settings. However, I don't personally recommend this. Finally, let's build the Unreal Engine source code remotely on AWS EC2 instances and simultaneously locally on our host machine using Horde and UBA. Open up the Visual Studio solution file for either the engine or your project. Again, make sure Development Editor and Win64 are selected up here. Right click either the engine or your project and select Build. I've already built this, so I'm doing a rebuild. You'll know everything is working as expected if the UBA Visualizer opens up with all of your worker machines running tasks. You may notice workers disconnecting or running out of memory. That's fine as long as the worker machines reconnect right after disconnecting and out of memory issues aren't necessarily bad either as long as the build finishes successfully. If you want to minimize these occurrences though, or there are actual build errors occurring, then you may need a stronger spec instance, as in more CPU cores and more RAM. Once the build has finished, sometimes, very rarely, there might be some errors. If there were any errors, sometimes you just have to build, not rebuild, the project again to clean those up. And if the build has succeeded, let's double check that by going to either the engine or project binaries, Win64, or whatever platform you built for directory and verify that the engine or game executable is present. In my case, it's the Unreal Editor and try to run it as well. If everything looks okay, then let's clean up our AWS resources so that we don't incur too much cost. Starting with the instances, let's delete all of these. Same goes for the Elastic IP addresses. Same goes for the AMIs and templates, if you created any. When deleting AMIs, don't forget to delete any associated snapshots. Again, double check that you have no lingering snapshots or volumes. Going back to the build configuration.xml file, let's disable remote builds and the UBA visualizer since we're not going to need that every time we build. By commenting out the Horde and Unreal Build Accelerator sections of this file. If you thought the video was helpful, then please consider supporting us on Patreon or become a member of the YouTube channel, or at least like, comment, and subscribe, and join our Discord server. But that is all for this introduction to Horde. Thank you to our higher tier patron, Cassidy Pointer. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.